Hello everyone, SolarJ here. I recently got a new Moog Super Monicon and I love it. Some people don't like it, some love it, and I'm definitely one of the lovers. Today we're gonna go through these five cute little patches that come with the synth, and we're gonna destroy them by messing around with the parameters and using control voltage from the Beatstep Pro. At the end of the video we'll jam a little and add different effects, so after watching this I hope you will have an idea of the potential of the synth and if it fits your workflow or not. Let's go! The first patch is called Nightfall. Ok, patch. We enable the EG and we should get some sound. Ok, nice. There's some harmony going on. It's using five of the six oscillators and they have been tuned in order to be uh, harmonic within each other. Let's try now to connect one of the drum gates of the Beatstep Pro to the trigger input of the Supermonicon. This way we can trigger the Supermonicon really fast, like that. Pretty interesting, in my opinion. One thing I really like is to play around with the envelopes. Here I'm messing around with the amp envelope and now with the filter envelope. The attack is also quite cool. And now let's try to do some pitch control. I take the pitch output of the Bitstep Pro, attenuate it a little bit because the voltage output is too high. And now I am messing around with the other output. The velocity output of the Bitstep Pro is connected to the cutoff in order to get this really interesting filtering modulation. We can add some randomness to the velocity values, maybe some swing. Okay, patch number two is called Omnicircular. This looks like a cool one because they tell us to play around with these knobs as indicated by the dash lines. Okay, also an harmonic patch. Let's try to open the filter a little bit and play around with the levels of the subs. the sound a bit longer with the amp EG. I really love the filter EG on this synth. It allows you to make like really fast sweeps and it's great for plug sounds. Let's try some super fast triggering like we did before. By using the trigger input in the patch bay, we can get really interesting rhythmical variation in addition to those you can already have by tuning the rhythm knobs on the Supermonicon. We can also change the root note that the Supermonicon is playing by sending MIDI notes via the Beatstep Pro. Patch number three, shifting intervals. In this patch, the clock triggers the synth, so when I connect this, we should get some sound. Hmm, wow, interesting. Very trippy. These little knobs sometimes are a bit tricky because they're very sensitive and like sub-millimeter movement could change the pitch that you send from the sequencer to the VCOs.
And now I'm messing around both with the cutoff and with the pitch of oscillator one. These very short plucked sounds are really nice with some reverb, like that. If you are into contemporary or experimental music, this is definitely the synth for you. It's very easy to get dissonant, atonal kind of patterns, like this one. Let's try to make it a bit more tonal by tuning the VCOs and the sequence. Oh my god, this filter. The VCA attack is quite funny, because if it receives a trigger during the attack phase, it will not reset. So I'm still getting used to this behavior. Here I'm trying to reset the sequencers at different times by using the drum gate from the Beatstep Pro. As you can see from the little LEDs in the upper left of the synth. Every time the Beatstep Pro sends a gate, the sequencer resets. So when I was editing the video, I realized I missed one of the five patches I promised, so I'm recording it right now. This one is called Jumping Off Point, and it doesn't have anything in the patch bay connected, and there are a lot of dash lines around many of the knobs, meaning that we, we are suggested to experiment with those. We started with only VCO1 and VCO2, and now we are adding in some of the subs and trying to find interesting intervals using the sub 1, sub 2 frequencies. This is also a harmonic patch, probably they tuned very nicely all the sequencer steps so that most of the values of the frequencies kind of fit together in a harmonic fashion. Let's play with the envelopes, this is a pretty cool patch actually. With longer envelopes, it's really interesting. Patch number five, it's called Bowser Boogie. This patch is triggered by the sequence one, so if I connect this, we get some sound. Try again the fast triggering effect. It's an interesting patch to 
Play via MIDI. Kind of works for every note. Wow, nice bass this one. There are some combination of tunings in the sequencer 1 and 2 that allow you to transpose the sequence and still get results that are diatonic to the same key more or less. You don't get like weird intervals. get really like a full frequency spectrum with the synth at the same time. You can get the bass and the kind of higher end at the same time. Okay, so these were the five patches that I found in the box. Uh, some of them are really cool, some of them they're not amazing in my opinion, uh, and I'm not sure if they were correct, because these knobs are so sensitive that sometimes I'm not really sure if I'm exactly in that exact position there, uh, but I think they made them so that, you know, you can get uh, familiar with the basic features of this synth. It's a cool start. Uh, you get familiar with the sequencer one, with the assignment, with the intervals, uh, with the sub levels, um, with the VCO levels, and some simple patching. We could get some interesting results with the CV of the Bitstep addition, and I'm definitely gonna explore this more. To summarize, I think this is a great synth, but it has a quite steep learning curve. And it helps a lot to have some kind of uh, music tier knowledge because when you turn these knobs, the frequency ones, most of the combination are not diatonic, they don't sound good right off the box. So if you know how tonal systems work, if you know what intervals and scales are, it can really help to find something that works. I'm lucky that I studied uh, jazz guitar for about 10 years and I can just hear by ear something that works and then add some harmony with other synths or other bass sounds that fit together well. So in my workflow it really fits well, but if you have no idea about music theory, never did uh, your training and not planning to, maybe this is not the perfect synth for you and it might end up slowing down your workflow or making it a bit more complicated. I'm not saying music theory is a requirement to make amazing electronic music, by all means that's not true. But to make the most out of the Super Monicon, I think it's quite useful. So that said, I think now I will jam a little bit and as promised try to add some crazy effects uh, from the DAW. So if you want to hear the Super Monicon with superpowers, stick around and let's go! <laughs> <laughs> 